Why am I doing this? Why cut these trees down for predominantly wood chip and pulp? I mean, you know, there's a lot of different reasons to go out for a run. Sometimes it's for training and, and sometimes it's to do something like this, which is point to point and has like a, a vastly deeper and different meaning to it. So my name's Mayal Backhausen. Um, I've got the very common nickname of Madge. I would say I was late to the, the world and the community of trail running, but yeah, it's, it's become a home. It's become somewhat of a lifestyle. I don't know why, I don't know how, but the whole concept behind running 100 miles seemed quite natural to me. And so, yeah, you just work with that and lean into it when you can and really enjoy it. And the next thing you know, You've got these unexpected, incredible opportunities in a whole different life that you never saw. And part of that is the opportunity to, to, to go and stand on the edge of a, a giant tract of amazing forest and landscape and run all the way to the other end. And it's something that hopefully we will be able to use to advocate for these, these forests and these lands and these animals and, and the protection that needs to be put upon this place. On the doorstep of the soon-to-be largest city in Australia, the driest occupied continent on Earth, lies a tract of forest that's a complex, carbon-rich biological zoo of unique, rare and endangered animals. Although not many locals think of it so formally. Nor do many of us call it forest. We call it bush or country. And it's far more important to us than being a biological park. Humans have been living here for over a thousand generations. Beyond its utilitarian value as a place of timber and water, or even a setting to take a muddy bike ride or a single track run, this tract of forest represents our last test for a species that already knows better. To many, this bush of gums and wattle and the largest tree ferns on the planet, creeks lined with ancient sassafras and myrtle beach, is to preserve it, or render ourselves the most remarkable, senseless species on earth. The economics of logging this bush don't stack up, and alternatives exist, but we persist. We persist doing the wrong thing by the animals, by the air, and if we think about it, ourselves. This is a run through a great forest, a forest that should no longer be logged, ever. It's, it's amazing when you think about, you know, four days time and the, the need to run, you know, 250, 300 kilometers in that time. And I think your mind can play a lot of tricks on you, but as a trail runner, I know that eventually when I get out there and just move, the body knows what it needs to do and the mind will soon enough quieten down. For me, I'm also just like, really, really unsure, like, what's going to unfold, because I've, 
I've done similar things, but I haven't done it like this. I haven't done it, you know, so close to home, yet so far away from home as well. And I feel like really excited, but also pretty nervous. I guess you go into it looking at maps and looking at maps and then it dawns that you've actually got to run it and the first day is probably in many ways the hardest you know your mind's going one way to say don't do it and your body's going the other way to say nah we're not doing this and then you know after 50k or so it, I, they they kind of both quieten down it's like oh i see what we're doing today we've done this before we're we're on a long long running day Cool, let's do this. It's a great forest to start. Have fun. Thanks, guys. If we can use this opportunity and this, this journey to help celebrate these places, then yeah, it makes me really, really excited to, to get out there and really explore what's, what's out there and immerse myself and connect. The run has begun. Standing on Tanarong land and making our way over to the east. It's a funny thing running. You know, like so, so often you hear people kind of passively joke about what are you running from? But it's, it's real, you know, like people run for a reason. And a lot of the time, you know, it's to escape whatever else they're doing in life. And if you do that time and time again, running is a very habitual sport that can seep into your everyday life. And then all of a sudden you need it more than anything. Definitely making small steps of progress up this hill. One of the good ones of the day, no doubt about it. Oh, is this it here? That was day one. Soul fulfilling. It's a big, it's a big place. It's a very big place. There was a couple of moments there where I was like, whoa, this is gonna take some mental fortitude. <laughs> this week. Do you want to do some practice? Oh, breathe easy, my friends. Breathe Can easy. you believe I just took you 70k's? Breathe easy. Breathe oh, All right. That was great. It was like a whole new day, isn't it? So we'll be spotlighting, uh, a key is to try and keep your spotlight close to your eyes, close to your face, and what you're looking out for is very bright yellow eye shine. Essentially our, our main goal is, is to try and protect these forests. The way that we do that is by searching for threatened species in the night. The most common that we look for is the leadbeater's possum and the greater glider. The Lebedus possum is a, is a critically endangered endemic species to Victoria and it's only found within the central highlands. There's only estimated to be around 1,500 to 2,000 or so animals left.
So if we're lucky enough to get footage, then we would submit that to the environment department. They would then verify it. And once it's verified, we get a 200 meter buffer, which is a protective buffer around the siding. Um, and then within that area, no logging is allowed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's I shine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, up in yeah. there. Yeah. Quite possibly a glider. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to see if there's a better view to see if we can film it. So today we continue heading east. It's going to be a common theme. Just kind of running past the first kind of big logging coop of the day. So almost everybody in Melbourne is dependent on this water from Mount Nash and Alpine Ash forests. 